things first. Stone wool and rock wool are the same thing, but from now on I'm calling it stone wool as fewer people seem to confuse this term with the insulation stuff like, oh, fiberglass, which is not used for growing plants. Anyway, all confusion aside, a lot of you told me that you enjoyed my previous related videos. <laughs> Thank you so much. But you also asked a ton of questions, which is awesome, mainly relating to irrigation. You know, when to water, how much, how often, by hand, drippers, ebb and flow, what? These practicalities, my friends, are pretty simple to master and can unlock the massive yield potential of stone wool that the commercial growers enjoy. We'll start with a simple experiment. I'm going to weigh this four inch grow block when completely dry and then once again saturated in water. Wow, look at that. Conclusion, stone wool can hold a lot of moisture. Now, I'm not suggesting that you weigh each individual plant before you water it. I mean, you can, but you should at least try to be familiar with how they feel when you lift them. Soon you'll instinctively know when your stone wool is half saturated, that is 50% full of moisture. If your plants are in veg, that's growing stems and leaves, I recommend 50% is the ideal time to re-irrigate. If you are confident in your growing ability and your plants are in transitioning or flowering and fruiting, try letting your stone wool dry out just a little more in between irrigations, around 30 to 40 percent. This helps to steer plants into generating buds and flowers faster rather than stretching up and becoming leggy and difficult to light efficiently. As your plants take up moisture and stone wool dries, air replaces the moisture promoting healthier roots. Now commercial growers call this dryback and believe me it's a good thing. Although stone wool is almost impossible to overwater, you know like up to the point of actually drowning your plants, consistently wet and saturated conditions make your plants roots lazy and will result in less than ideal growth rates. Think about it. There's there's no reason for them to go out and expand their territory in permanently wet conditions. It's also a perfect environment for root disease such as pythium, so dry back is important. So how should you irrigate stone wool? Well the obvious method is by hand, you know, with a watering can, just like you would with soil. You can also dip your blocks into a bucket of nutrient solution, but more common is to use automatic irrigation. Flood and drain tables are a favorite of mine, easy to set up, few moving parts, but it's less precise. However, all that said, I love the simplicity of stone wool and flood and drain so I definitely recommend it. Make sure you flood high enough so that the whole block is saturated. You should also manually top feed every week or so to help rinse the stone wool of residual salts as continually irrigating from the bottom like this can cause salt buildups at the top of the blocks. Now drip irrigation is the preferred commercial method and if you're using big mama blocks or grow slabs then you should definitely go down this route. You can feed more often and you can retain the ability to alter irrigation levels for individual plants. It takes more time to set up of course and you need to watch out for things like clogged drippers. Obviously, drip irrigation requires a bit more thought and precision. Aim for 20 to 30 percent runoff. Watch my other video on DIY drippers for more detail on how you can measure this in practice. Adequate runoffs helps to flush away any excess mineral salts that can occasionally build up around the root zone. For seedlings and cuttings and starter plugs, I soak them in pH adjusted nutrient solution, say 200 ppm at around 5.5 pH, and leave them for four or five days after soaking. The most I'll do is give them a bit of mist. Some of you also asked about flushing. How now, I plan to go into a lot more detail in a dedicated video, but for now, understand that you shouldn't really need to flush this stuff if you're irrigating correctly. Okay, I hope that answered most of your questions, but feel free to post any more down below. Thanks for watching. This is a perfectly moist ever saying adios, amigos.